Oh, so we can say. Maybe one can go. Okay, let's put the thumbs up, so. Oh, I am I am sorry. Good morning and a really warm welcome to you all to our service of Holy Communion this morning on the 6th of December. And it's so lovely to be back in church as well as welcoming those who are watching on Facebook in the comfort of their own homes. Hopefully you've all received a copy of the notices via email. If you don't have access to email, please pick up a paper copy at the back of church. Um, if you wish to be added to our email distribution list, please contact the parish office or message us through our Facebook page. There's just a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. Our Christmas card is at the back of the church. If you wish to, um, rather than sending your Christmas card to everybody in the church, we sign up one card um, and then pop the do put the donation into the, the box, um, into the wall safe at the back, or use our electronic tap um, to give a donation for what you would have spent on cards um, if, you, if you wish to do that. Um, on Friday, our pop up shop raised just over £300. We're not exactly sure the exact amount because some of you did use our electronic tap machine and so we, we need to wait for the statement to know exactly how much was, was raised from that. If you're able to help with the walking nativity in any way, shape or form, please contact Katie. There's lots of preparation to do as well as stewarding and dressing up on the night. So if you can help, please contact me as soon as possible. And the Friday Carol service, we have sold out online, but the office do have a few tickets left. So if you wish to come to that, we're keeping those tickets back for congregation members. If you wish to book a ticket, please contact the office and they can um, issue you with a ticket and your car registration number. Of course, if you don't have a car, we have the Patriot singers singing in the field on Sunday the 20th at 3 o'clock. All the welcome to come and stand socially distanced around the outside of the field. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come to worship you. Thank you that we can open your word and break bread together. In Jesus' name, Amen. So let's listen to our first hymn as I light the, the uh, Advent gift. To, we'll come back to listening to some music and walk away. So the Lord be with you and he also with me. I'm sure you know the words on that heart anyway, don't you? Let's say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In that you are dear Jesus, we bring out the blue books. Thank you. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things that are now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, 
us, let us confess our sins. As we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord of God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please we now have our Bible readings. Thank you, Jesus. Our first Bible reading is from 2 Peter 3, verses 8 to 15. The day of the Lord. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the Holy Prophets and the command given by our Lord and Saviour through your Apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forgot that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also, the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved, for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction by the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow, slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. By the day of the Lord, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives, as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, 
Since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins, and they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
good you are at waiting. Are you the sort of person that can't wait to open cards and gifts, who tries to work out what they are by touching them, or smelling them, or even shaking them? And what about Advent calendars? Are you very strict? Do you only open the day that it is? Or do you sneak a chocolate further down the month? And have you got your Christmas tree up yet? And have you been listening and singing Christmas carols? A few years ago, I did a school assembly with a colleague involving an advent calendar. And it was a bit of a pantomime. I was wanting to open all the windows and eat the chocolate. The children were supposed to tell me not to. And their answers to that question, why can't I, were both insightful as well as And this year has been all about waiting, waiting for not going to lift, waiting to see family and friends, waiting for a COVID result, waiting to see if a loved one will recover or not. And this waiting seems to be going on forever. And we don't know when it will really end. Although, as the ever optimist, there is that shrink chink of light, isn't there, with the development and licensing of a vaccine. And then we will wait in turn for our turn to receive it. And I want to share a poem with you, which was written by Danuta Levitska, who is a specialist in ageing and dementia care who throughout the pandemic has offered online support to staff in care homes up and down the country. And her reflection was one of the first ones, but it's the first one I think, on our diocesan advent calendar. And unbeknown to me, Sandra also chose that reflection to put in our notices this week. And she writes, The waiting seems to go on forever, waiting for lunch, waiting for tea, waiting for that someone special who lights up your life. And in the midst of this relentless pandemic, the reality for those living in care homes is that waiting is inevitably, persistently, prolonged. A flame of empathy is lit within for all cared for and for the care giver. And this poem, which she wrote in June of this year, reflects so many of us in our own waiting room, in a world on our own. And it highlights the singular waiting of Advent, made more stark by the absence of being able to all worship together. But faith, she writes, invites her to believe that whatever I am in my own little world, God still comes with the promise of a sparkling dance and a calm up turn. It's entitled Homecoming. Let me come alongside you now with gentleness and humility. I'm hurried and quiet after so long, not knowing or understanding the kind of world you created for yourself while I've been away. Did you notice that I've been away? Maybe in time I can win your trust, your friendship, and maybe even your heart. What if that is absent, I will still come, keeping us alive, even though our dance is interrupted. Have 
fortunate I am that these women and men who come night and day when I could not stood in the gap where I used to be. Gratitude is too small a word. But now I can come back and together we can learn new dance steps. A tune of our own making. Shy at first, we eye each other from chairs along the wall. Then, one day, a while from now, I tentatively hold out my hand, palm up hand. Would you like to dance? I ask, smiling into your eyes. You place your hand in mine and sparkle back. I thought you'd never ask. And here, in our second letter of Peter, and in our Gospel reading as well this morning, it is about waiting. The writer of Peter is telling the listeners, be patient in the waiting for the second coming of the Messiah. And in our Gospel reading, Mark describes John the Baptist's words as he quotes from Isaiah. And then he tells people, Jesus is on his way. The wait is almost over. And if we read on, Jesus then of course appears at the river Jordan and is baptised by John, ready to begin his ministry. The wait is over, declares John. Jesus is here. The Messiah has come to live among us. And for us living today, we have those stories of Jesus' life, death and resurrection as we are waiting for the second coming. And that, of course, is one abs abs aspect of Advent. Thinking and pondering and praying and reflecting. And thinking about the life we are living. For us as Christians, we know that the waiting described in Isaiah is over. The Messiah has come. And here in Peter, the writer is explaining the issue of time. Time, as we know, is an earthly concept. God is outside of time. Which, if you think too hard about, makes you rainy. Time is marked by seasons, by the moon and the sun, by the sea tides. And as human beings, we have added names and numbers to mark time. When I'm in the churchyard on a Friday morning, doing a bit of reading around the memorial stones, I like to read the inscriptions. There are usually dates as well as a person's name and a thoughtful word or two. And when we really think about it and think about our time here on earth, compared with the enormousness of time since the beginning, it really is tiny. But you know, but to God, our dates and our years don't really matter. Our love, our very existence, is what is important to him. To God, whether we live over a hundred years, or whether a little one never takes their first breath, we are all still loved in exactly the same way. We are still cherished in exactly the same way. To God. A thousand years is as one day. One day is as a thousand years. And yet we may not understand it. It may make our brain ache because God is outside of time. 
and Emily Grant knows when Jesus is going to return. So wait, just as we are, to accept that God's timing and our timing run on very different well, timetables. And just imagine if we, for a moment, apply God's sense of waiting, God's sense of patience. Would we see things differently? Would we think differently about COVID? Would we feel differently about waiting for test results, for the kettle to boil, for the program to start on the television, for the traffic lights to change? Would we think differently about Advent? Would we think differently about the second coming of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ? Because if we apply God's patience in our expectation of our salvation and the salvation of the whole world, without the hurrying along, without the human desire to get to the next step, perhaps, just perhaps, we will find waiting more to our liking and allow ourselves to live in each moment that God has blessed us with. Let us stand as we say the creed together. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our time of intercession. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray. 
walls of the cave, and all the few guests who have continued to honor me by my services during these ten months. Please let me know of your love and support. Lord, be my mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that the prophecy is safe and successful. Please be with those who are organizing its distribution. We pray for all the scientists who have worked so hard to get a vaccine. Please be with them so that they Lord, we be with the church and community during this time. So help us all to care and know the true spirit of Christmas. Peace, goodwill, faith, and the hope of eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Continued. Our service continues with Eucharistic prayer for you. The following books is on page 10. This is your purposes. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because you sent him to redeem us from sin and death and make us inheritors of the everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing and in confidence may stand before him. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine out poor may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. Before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. When your kingdom comes, justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Let us say together, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather at the front under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Come to the Lord's table. The banner over it is love. And as we've been doing Holy Communion, I will bring it to your seat. If you wish to receive in both. just to mention that to me as I bring it to you. 